This is a short video to report on an experiment I've been doing with TIAs, termination insensitive amplifiers. And this is the schematic for an IF strip that I've been experimenting with. And it consists of two TIA blocks either side of a crystal filter. The TIA blocks are absolutely identical to the microbidex design, apart from the fact that the usual 10 ohm resistor from this capacitor on the common emitter transistor to ground as part of its emitted degeneration is omitted and it's been replaced by an NPN transistor. This all came about because I saw this fascinating post from George, uh, VK4AMG. And what George described is that he took possession of a friend's microbidex, which was a little bit deaf up on the upper bands. I think he talks about 10 metres. He looked at the circuit and he came up with a modification, exactly as I've described there, to remove that 10 ohm resistor in the emitter and replace it with a NPN transistor's emitter collector junction, which apparently, I didn't know this, its impedance is quite low and it changes based on its base voltage. Now this is an unusual configuration because there is effectively no DC voltage on the collector. George describes being able to swing the gain of this single transistor gain block from 6 dB to 40 dB by varying the voltage on the base of the emitter transistor between 0 and 5 volts. What he's done here is he's come up with a way of varying the gain of a TIA. George went on and built a fairly conventional audio AGC circuit to pick up some audio from the volume control and deliver a 0 to 5 volt AGC swing, which he then places on the bases of these emitter transistors. So here's my mock-up of this, uh, but that is one TIA block there. This little copper box here is a 4 megahertz crystal filter, just five crystals in series with 100 puff capacitors to earth. Uh, there's a matching transformers underneath there, just uh, FT3743 toroids with the right amount of primary and secondary windings. And then this here is the second gain block, the second TIA. And over here, this section here is the dual op amp, which is a TL072, and the various components around it to generate the 0 to 5 volts, which runs along this wire here. So with no audio to the input of the AGC, the AGC is at its resting point, and this voltage coming onto this trim pot here is close to 5 volts. That's good, Andrew. VK3HAH, VK3. This is the spectrum analyzer software that you can use with the SDR Play RSP1A. So I've got it centered on 4 megahertz, 10 dB per vertical division, and 5 kilohertz per horizontal division. I don't have a tracking generator, so I'm using this broadband noise generator, just a couple of transistors powered from a transistor battery. So that's generating broadband RF noise. So that's with power off and the frequency span is flat as you'd expect it. I'll just put power on the little IF strip there and now we can see the peak of the IF strip which is centered on that 4 megahertz crystal filter and it's peaking to about minus 54 dB. So now if I wind back the AGC, so now I've turned the trim pot right back to minimum. 
wait for the averaging to settle down a little bit and we can see that it's dropped about 30 dB. We can measure that more accurately. So we were at minus 54. Bring the pointer down to the top of the peak now, minus 84. There's minus 84, so it's a dB or so off 30 dB. So we've got two TIA amplifiers here, crystal filter in the middle, and we're seeing 30 dB of AGC range. By way of calibration, if I connect the RF noise generator straight into the spectrum analyzer, that's power off. That's with the power on the noise generator. The noise floor rises about 5 dB. So the input to the IF strip I take to be minus 105 dB. So at minus 55, we're seeing about 50 dB of gain. So the ultimate test of an IF amplifier with AGC is to build it into a receiver. Here's a project that I've been working on recently. The yellow clip lead is connecting AGC onto the amplifier. So without AGC, there's a bit of variation in signal strength. And AGC back on. And off. Not much variation on a strength 5 signal. Let's try a strength 9 signal. So this sense 9 signal is under AGC control right now. Let's release the AGC. and it just about goes into overload. Let's hear that again. So I decided to send an email to Bill and Pete of Solder Smoke. And while they were both encouraging, Bill wasn't so sure that this was a good idea. And he recommended that I went and had another look at Wes and Bob's original article from June 2009, which I did. Bill pointed out that if you changed the emitter degeneration resistor, the gain would be affected, but there might be other side effects as well. And sure enough, a couple of pages down, we read that the feedback resistor and the emitter degeneration resistor, in combination with the load, set the input at 50 ohms. These parts also establish the gain. So my circuit was effectively altering the emitter degeneration resistor RD. Sure it was changing the gain, but it was probably also changing other things as well, in particular the 50 ohm input impedance. A little bit further down, Wes and Bob present a table for the three resistors feedback, load and degeneration and the values that you can choose to get prescribed gains whilst holding the input impedance at 50 ohms. So this circuit modification is certainly capable of swinging the gain around under AGC control but it's almost certainly swinging the input impedance around at the same time. So it's no longer a termination insensitive amplifier. So how much does that matter? Perhaps you need to look at the preceding stages of each of these TIA gain control blocks to have a think about what varying input impedance might mean. In my case, the first TIA interfaces with a high gain single transistor class A post mixer amplifier, which has a 50 ohm output. The second TIA block in my prototype interfaces via a matching transformer into the crystal filter. Is this a useful circuit block? You tell me in the comments. Or maybe you can come up with perhaps a mitigation or a different way of AGC controlling a fixed gain termination insensitive amplifier. And a big thanks to George for posting this idea 
And here's analysis of it on VK Homebrew on Facebook back on March the 3rd.